Welcome back, Edgeteers. So I'm here in my new studio. Well, it's not really a studio. It's a corner of my bedroom, but you know, it works for me. So I was just toying around with my MacBook Pro 2008, one of the best MacBooks that was ever released. And it's saying I can update to Mac OS High Sierra. So I figured, why not? Let's see if it'll let me. You can see we're on OS X El Capitan version 10.11.6 and it's the early 2008. It's a 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo. And I wanted to check and just see if there were any updates for this system. So I cruised into the App Store and says I've got two updates and if I scroll down I really do have two updates uh, I have a software update with some security fixes and other things and I have a solitaire update so it looks like this update is a security fix for 10.11.6 so it looks like uh, OS X or OS 10, however you want to say it, El Capitan is only receiving minor updates now and security fixes. So I'm not sure what that'll change the version number to, if at all. But before I do that, I thought it was kind of strange that it said I could do a free upgrade to Mac OS High Sierra, considering I am, after all, on a 2008 MacBook Pro. So I was curious. Um, I'm going to try it. I think it's going to fail, but you know, I mean, they're offering it, so why not? So I'm going to click the free upgrade. And now it says this version of Mac OS 10.13.4 cannot be installed on this computer. I'm going to say OK and I'm going to do this update. Since I can't get Mac OS High Sierra unless I fudge it. Which I don't think is a very good idea while El, El Capitan is still supported. So I'm going to do the security update only. It wants me to do a download and restart. So I'm going to stop the recording and then I'm going to start this update. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do a download and restart. Well, we're going to try. And we're going to let that update run. In the meantime, since you're here, I'll give you a little preview of my studio setup. Um, I did have to move out of my regular studio room because my son is moving back in for a little while. I have some smaller lights that I bought when I was traveling, and I'm going to use those while I'm in here. My big studio kit is just kind of too much. And I've got here two very inexpensive folding tables for $59 at Staples. Uh, I really didn't want to have to put stuff together so I bought these tables 59 bucks and then down below is and it's kind of hard to see because it's not too awful bright but it's a little shelving system foldable the same thing literally no building whatsoever all I had to do was take those shelves and fold them out so I could literally move this set up in just two minutes flat and I have dual monitors I did invest a little extra money and upgraded my monitors to be identical the HP 25 ES monitors I really like those I do think I need a new keyboard though I kind of want something that is backlit this one's okay but I actually like how it types but it's not backlit so I have this light up here that I use and it doesn't bother my wife when she's sleeping and I've got my shelving unit here with some eye candy on it and right here I have hooked up to my computer my TV that I bought you might remember I got it for 50 bucks at Best Buy. It was on sale for 80 I believe, and I had a uh, coupon, so I used that coupon. 
and down here is my Dell 5675 I believe it's a Dell Dimension my main editing system and over here I have a little bit of room for computer so I've set up my old MacBook 2008 I just had a hankering to use it and you can see that it's giving me about eight minutes left to do this update uh, somebody once told me they were like why did you buy this MacBook it's complete garbage and I guess it's in the eye of the beholder. I personally think it's a really nice system and I love using it. And when I just want the nostalgia of using a MacBook Pro that actually is full of ports and well designed. And it actually has a nice screen. I think it's better than the MacBook unibody screen before they went to Retina. I think it looks better. And by the way, I've got a printer back here. I didn't show you that. I've got a laser printer and a dresser to set things on, which I already have. Coffee cups. Coffee cups are important. I don't know what you think, but I like the system. It, it, it works pretty good. The keyboard is wonderful, but <laughs> my dog got scared because a pile of stuff fell over, so she jumped up on the bed and she actually jumped on the keyboard. She popped out three or four of the keys but only broke one so I ordered a used keyboard for 14 bucks I figure I could keep the parts that way um, that way where is it there it is there it is the key itself is perfectly fine let me flip it around it's the brightness key the keyboard on this computer is in perfect shape, but as you can see, the uh, white piece, which is the butterfly mechanism, is actually broken. So I'm thinking I'm just going to need the butterfly mechanism off the bottom. And I'll, I'll take that from under the keyboard and just replace it and keep the rest of it in case there's another emergency. Because... You really can't get new keys for it. I looked around. I didn't look a ton, but I did look around and I really couldn't find anything. All right, let's see how this is doing. It says about a minute left. The screen looks terrible in the video. I do apologize. It's not actually happening on the computer, of course. Now, when I got this computer, oh, there it goes rebooting. I did not know it had a massive dent on the side here. It didn't really show up in the pictures. But I didn't pay very much for it anyway. Uh, the rest of it is in perfect condition. There literally wasn't a scratch on it anywhere else. And as is typical with these older MacBooks, it does overheat a little bit. But um, I don't use it for that much. One thing I do like using it for because the screen is so big and it's actually, in my opinion, like I was saying, sharper than the the unibody models. I guess it's it's depends on what you like, but I think it's much easier to visually see this screen than the MacBook Pro unibody non-retina. Okay, I'm going to log in. They just don't make them like they used to. I think that these MacBooks are beautiful. They had their problems though. You can see that I've got a little bit of a bowing here. I actually caused that when I dismantled it and I put a new SSD in it. So I could take the deck apart here again and gently push that in uh, and it would be fine. The DVD drive works. It's the only computer I have with a DVD drive. The other thing it has and I had to use this computer when I was working on fixing my internet connection was the network jack so I could plug directly into our modem. It's the only computer I have that could do that. I did not have a desktop computer at the time and it worked great.
Okay, diagnostics and usage. I do not believe I'm going to send diagnostics data. We will continue. All right, we're back. This thing runs great with the SSD, by the way. I'm going to go back to About Your Mac. Still has version 10.11.6, so that has not changed. It now has its updates, though, so that works for me. So this unit's a 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo with 6 gigs of RAM. I upgraded it to 6 gigs from 2. Put in the... Actually, I don't want the report there. Put in the SSD. And it works much, much better. And I can watch DVDs on it, which I really like. So if I want to watch DVDs, this is the tool I'll use. Although I could watch it on my desktop now. Uh, but if I'm being lazy and just want to sit around, this is what I'll use. All right. Well, guess there won't be any Mac OS High Sierra for the old MacBook 2008. But that's okay. I did get the security updates for 10.11.2, so I feel much more confident that if I'm going to use the computer just tooling around the internet or watching some DVDs or maybe watching some YouTube, I won't have to worry about anything. Well, mostly. You know how the internet is. Seems like there's a new problem every five minutes. Probably every five seconds. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.